Welcome to The Know, I'm Mika Burton. Looks like Sean Murray may be crawling out of whatever hole he disappeared into after the disastrous launch of No Man's Sky. And when he does, it'll be to speak at the upcoming Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. But don't hold your breath that he'll be speaking about what went wrong, which was a lot of things, with the game and what they plan on doing to fix it, because his presentation is going to be all about math. Uh, Murray's GDC talk, titled Building Worlds Using Maths, will be all about how Hello Games created a seemingly infinite universe with just some algorithms. Maybe developers will be able to take notes on what not to do in their games. GDC 2017 runs from February 27th through March 3rd, so maybe somebody will be able to get the full story out of Murray during that window. Fingers crossed. It's about damn time! Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has officially gone gold. With just a little less than a month less for release, it's nice to know that the game is totally done with development. This news broke over the weekend thanks to a tweet by Monolith Soft developer Yasuyuki Hone, which showcased the rap party from the newest Zelda title. Monolith Soft, creator of Xenoblade Chronicles X, were brought in on Breath of the Wild to assist with some of the game's open world elements, which is why some of the team were invited to the shindig. Breath of the Wilds was first announced back in 2013 for the Wii U, so it's kind of crazy that the day is almost here. It launches March 3rd along with the Nintendo Switch, which is soon, super soon. A familiar name will be appearing in credits for a future Xbox One exclusive. Joseph Staten, one of the lead writers for the original Halo series and Destiny, is now lending his pen to Crackdown 3. Staten made the announcement on Twitter writing, gotta do a little at Crackdown writing yesterday, and off to visit the dev team in the UK today. It's been a fine few days, agents. Considering the game is supposed to be out later this year, it does seem a tad late to be working on some of its writing. Typically, that happens a bit earlier in the process. And while Staten did the writing for some notable titles in recent years, it's also important to remember that he also wrote the Microsoft exclusive ReCore, so set your expectations appropriately. Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft's tactical shooter, is getting enormous update today. Velvet Shell officially launches the second season of content for Siege and brings two new operators as well as brand new map. These new operators, Mira and Jackal, feature two special abilities which allow them to use a one-way bulletproof mirror to spy on enemies, as well as footprint scanning to see where the enemies ran off to. In addition to that, Velvet Shell packs a ton of UI and gameplay adjustments, bug fixes, and even more. After a relatively soft launch, Ubisoft has turned Rainbow Six Siege into something of a template that all multiplayer games want to follow. Its microtransactions are cosmetic, they've supported it with tons of post-release content, and they've listened a lot to the community to turn it into a totally different game. You can start enjoying Velvet Shell and the launch of Year 2 today for $30. It's hard to go more than a couple of days without cool Final Fantasy XV news, like today is Ignis's birthday. Happy birthday, Ignis. Thanks to all the updates and <laughs> the game is getting. And according to some new information from Square, they are fully committed to providing more content and making the game even better. Final Fantasy XV director Hajime Tabata told Dual Shockers in a recent interview that 70% of the game's initial staff of 300 are still actively working on supporting it with free updates, DLC, and even VR content. At the moment, they have plans for a full year of content at the very least. Typically, once the game launches, the staff is mostly dissolved or moved to other projects, so this is a pretty cool move by Square. The DualShockers visit to Square Enix also revealed that the company currently has an experimental version of Final Fantasy XV with ridiculous graphic settings running on two GTX 1080s. Tool Shockers emphasizes that this is an experimental version and in no way means a real PC port is happening but also says that the game is truly stunning, and more importantly, exists. So last week, Tabata said that he wanted to bring Final Fantasy XV to the PC and let users play around with both mods and player-generated quests. So we might be one step closer to that being reality. Imagine all of those pixels on Gladio's glorious abs. Rejoice, Psychonaut fans! Psychonauts 2 has an official publisher. Starbreeze Publishing announced yesterday that it will be publishing and distributing the long-awaited sequel, which was crowdfunded last year to the tune of around $4 million. Along with the funds gathered by FIG, Starbreeze will be pouring in an additional $8 million to the development of Psychonauts 2, which will pick up after the events of both Psychonauts 1 and the VR entry Rhombus of Ruin, starring a brand new character. According to the structure of the contract, Starbreeze will get 85% of the money the game makes upon initial release until they make back their money, which will also include marketing costs. After that, the shares drop down to 60%, so if you're wondering how publishing deals work in the video game industry, they usually suck. Psychonauts 2 will launch for consoles and PC in 2018, and if I'm correct, James Willems will be voicing a toilet. Now that Ben Affleck is out for directing DC's upcoming solo Batman flick, rumors are circulating about who Warner Brothers is eyeing for the director's seat. 
According to a number of reports out there, that short list of directors includes Matt Reeves, who helmed the recently rebooted Planet of the Apes movies, Matt Ross, the director of Captain Fantastic, and even George Miller, the man behind the Mad Max series. Of course, these are just rumors at the moment, but George Miller did nearly work on the Justice League movie that almost got launched by Warner Brothers several years ago. You know, before they started their current horrible trash fire fiasco. Hopefully, whoever wins the spot will fare better than the directors of both Wonder Woman and Flash movies. It's basically been musical chairs over on those two productions. Sticking with the Hollywood rumor mill, rumors have also been in play for quite some time that Fox is looking to completely reboot the X-Men franchise, and it might happen sooner than you think. My Entertainment World, a website that lists movie productions, has a new entry for X-Men Supernova, which it says is set to start production in Montreal later this year. Judging by the synopsis, Supernova is a more proper and true to the source material take on the Dark Phoenix saga. And let's be honest, just about anything would be better than how X-Men Last Stand handled it. Both the title and the synopsis match other rumors about the new X-Men film. Screen Crush reported the title earlier this year, and in November, LRM Online reported that they were eyeing the Dark Phoenix saga. So we'll see if this turns out to be true, but geez guys, let's at least breathe a little bit before you reboot. I mean, Logan's coming out soon, it's just, it's, it's so much X-Men. You might be thinking people who love watching esports are a part of the minority, but we've got some new evidence to the contrary. Famous League of Legends pro Faker, one of the game's best players in the world, decided to try his hand at Twitch streaming yesterday and proceeded to shatter the platform's viewing records. PVP Live reports that within Faker's first hour alone, his stream became the single largest individual stream of all time on Twitch, with more than 245,000 concurrent viewers, and that is a lot of people at one time. So if you're a streamer trying to get more viewers, it seems pretty easy. Just become the world's best League of Legends player. Duh, there you go. Pro strats from the know, you're welcome. So that about does it for today's roundup. Let us know what you thought about any of these stories down in the comments. And as always, for more news from every corner of the internet, remember to like this video and subscribe to The Know. ...here of content at the very least. Typically, once a game launches, the staff is mostly devolved into the nether or moved off to what? Dissolved. What'd I say? Devolved. Shit. Start with typically. Typically, once a game launches, the staff is mostly devolved into nothingness or... Did I say devolved? Dissolved! God damn it!